The title for the sermon is called "He First Loved Us," and it's from First John four nineteen. Okay, everyone seems very serious and focused. Okay, good. Okay, so let's go. Uh, I will be asking. We'll be asking. I uh, will be reading some verses. So I'll be randomly going around, <laughs> giving the mic to some people, and I want to read the verse when I just do this. <laughs> Could you read verse thirteen? Uh, this is how we know that we live in Him, <clears throat> and He in us. He has given us as His Spirit. Okay, verse fourteen. Okay, verse 15. Oh, you can see? Oh. If anyone acknowledged that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they, they are in God. Okay, thank you. Now, verse 16. Okay, all these low voices. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Oh, yeah. And so we have a little guy on both comes for us. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, we are going on. <laughs> okay, I'm coming up. And yes, God is love. God is love. Whoever lives, lives in love lives in God, and God lives in them. Yes, verse 17. This is how love is made completely among us. So, what will we have? Come witness on the day, on the day of the judgment. This is word we are like Jesus. In this world, okay, verse 18. There is no fear in death, but perfect love drives off fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fear is not made perfect in love. Okay, verse 19. <laughs> oh, we love. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I know it's like you were surprised. Verse 20. Whoever fears to love God and hates a brother or sister is not For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen, not the God whom they have not seen. Okay, thank you. Now, verse 21. Coming up again. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brothers and, and sisters. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, I hope you were able to read through. <laughs> you guys were all scared. <laughs> Am I going to be cold? <laughs> okay, so these verses from First John chapter 14. Uh, were you able to focus? What was it talking about? What was it talking about? It was talking about love, yes. People are showing me this heart. Okay, about love. It says that God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. And this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. Yeah, And there is no fear in love. Because perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. And here is something very important. It says, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. It's pretty strong. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. So we are talking about love, but this love that we are talking about doesn't seem very soft and gentle and warm because it says, you, if you're hating your brother or sister, you're hating God too. Right? God is right on you. Pinpointing if you hated your brother or sister. This brother or sister doesn't mean just your sibling, right? Not just, you know, some of you are just only child. So this isn't only talking about your brother or sister at home, right? Boys over here, yes. This is talking about everyone around us, our friends. And even me, you know, this is actually, I feel like, oh no. <laughs> even though I'm not going around like angry at people, hating them out, you know, front. 
But inside my heart, even though I'm always smiling, you know, I'm a sinner too. So I also have times when I felt like, ah, so annoying. Why is that person doing that to me? Or why is that person so irritating? You know, I've been thinking about these things too. I've been hating. <laughs> and God says, then you're not loving me. Oh my, what should I do? And God even said, right? Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Somebody asked, right? Somebody very smart. Who thinks I know everything about God's law, God's rules, right? Ask Jesus just to test him. And Jesus said what? We sang this song in the morning, right? Second graders, we sang, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, right? And it says that's the first commandment, greatest commandment, to love our God. And the second is just like that, love your neighbor. So it's all about love, but it's not like, oh, I love you, love. It's a little more strong in a sense that we shouldn't hate. We should go forth and really love. And that is not just, oh, I think you should love. It's nice to love. It's not like that. It says you must, you should. Right, Lena and Jenny? It says you should love, right? Yes, that's what God is saying in the Bible. And I'm actually, I picked this um, uh, topic today because every day (laughs) with my young students, every day we have this and that trouble. (laughs) And it's all about, not academics, never, it's not, you know, nobody comes to me, I have trouble with math, I have trouble with science. Nobody does that. (laughs) It's always about friendship. It's always about relationship. This person doesn't like me. I think that person really hates me. And I'm so sad. It's all about that. It's always that trouble. And they fight. And they hate. And they come back and say, Oh, I love you. (laughs) And it's normal. I'm not saying that is wrong or that is very bad. Because it's not only for young kids. right? It happens with older kids too. Every day. In your heart maybe. Maybe you're not saying it to them. But you are always doing that in your heart too, right? You're not only living by yourself. So this is something that's related to our lives every day. Every day. Love, 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 God says. And again, right? We just read it. If you hate a brother or sister, then you are a liar to say, I love God. And you should love your brother and sister. How? How? This is so hard. And I brought this up because some people, (laughs) I know older kids, I guess from fourth grade and up or fifth grade or sixth grade and up, I think most of you have experienced this, something called personality test, MBTI. How many of you tried MBTI test, the personality test that's on the, like, yeah, oh, I thought more, oh, okay. So I know you're like, oh, I know, you know, I'm AS whatever or EN something, okay. (laughs) This is so big in Korea. Why is why are people so into this? I saw even like K-pop idol is this MBTI. So I want to be like that person or something like that. This is so big in Korea. I brought this thinking, you know, people are so curious and they want to actually Uh, have good relationship with other people. But it's very hard to understand other people's feelings or their thoughts, their personality. Why is this person acting this way? You know, I want to be loved this way, but that person is so different. Why? And then people are curious about, like, how I am and how they are. So then they begin to test themselves with these kind of personality type uh, tests. And... Anyways, so there are like 16 personalities and I know there's so much like TikTok, Facebook, uh, Instagram, all these little shorts, uh, videos about like parodies of these personalities. They even have like dress codes for these personalities and whatever, you know. Um, But anyways, I'm not trying to promote. (laughs) I'm just saying they actually, why did they make MBTI from the first place? And the history goes to somebody called Carl Jung, and he's a psychiatrist, very well known. Very, like, if you study psychology, anybody, maybe not, but uh, you learn about that person. And from, uh, based on his theory of perception, um, mom and daughter, actually, that's the, that's uh, Myers and Briggs, that's uh, the last names of mom and 
daughter. And they worked together to make this, uh, to help people. Actually, this is after World War II. There were, you know, so many changes in the society. So then these ladies were trying to help people to understand themselves and understand the world, like about others. So that's why they made this test. And um, so then people were being helped by this. And I remember doing this for the first time when I was going to China, before I went to China for my missions. Actually, like Christian group, they said, you, uh, we want to help you to see what kind of personality you have because this helps to understand how to work with other missionaries in your group, like to just help each other by understanding. And uh, people are very curious because last two years, I think last two, three years, this has become so big in Korea. And, and as you can see, like Korea is 100, that means the, it's not like 100 people or the whole nation is doing it, but still like compared to other countries, our country was the country that had the most interest in this uh, test about personality, right? And uh, the reasons I found, like experts were saying, maybe it's because of COVID pandemic, you know, people are very, uh, you know, they were in their own uh, what do you say, like they weren't going out to society, so they are very worried about themselves, like not sure. So then they began to look into themselves and our society, some people were writing how our society have high standards. So uh, they all feel very unstable about themselves. So they began to just wanting to know, like number four, belongingness grouped with others. They want to be grouped with somebody else. Like if I'm ISFP or ENJ, what was it? I forgot. Anyway, something like that. Then, oh, maybe Grace is the same as me. Oh, then I feel relieved. Oh, I'm not the only person like this. And maybe Priska is this. Then, oh, I, I'm very similar to her. You know, you can kind of categorize yourself with someone else. So they feel kind of comfort in this. And the, the greatest actually reason I think is because it's so convenient. It's so easy. You guys just take maybe less than 10 minutes to just do this on the free app, right? Free like online website. And I've done it too. Like I, and it didn't change much from when I was much younger, when I, you know, did it when I was younger. But anyways, so these types of things are used for people to understand each other. And then I just went back to the old days, like 90s. <laughs> I don't know if anybody from like teachers know this, but uh, because it was so, it was such a big issue to understand how girls and boys are different, worse, like the opposite, right? People were just curious, why are you so different? And I remember talking with like third graders, how uh, male teachers will say, if you have something on your hand, like your finger, there's a small like paper cut, and you go to male teacher and, oh, I'm hurt. And the male teacher says, oh, it's okay, it will heal soon. And then like, if you go to female teacher, they'll say, oh, are you okay? And we give you like band-aid. <laughs> you know, like, but that doesn't really, you know, we cannot say all the girls are like that, all the boys are like that. But because people just wanted to understand, even like psychologists like uh, called John Gray, he wrote the book called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, just meaning, we're so different, <laughs> as if we're aliens from different uh, planets. So, um, but these might help. I mean, psychology is good, yes. I'm not saying these are bad. I'm not saying these don't help. But there are problems with these too, because I know youngsters right nowadays, you guys are so into this, you know, you're so happy. I'm just like this Son Heung Min, same MBTI as Son Heung Min, yeah. <laughs> I mean, those are not bad, but um, we might be stereotyping people as, you know, we are trying to understand and love, but at the same time, we might be categorizing people in small boxes. We might be putting them and judging them and criticizing them. So we have to be careful with these things. And these could be inconsistent. And this is not just from me, but experts like psychologists or whatever, you know, people, they are all talking about these things. I mean, MBTI is great, but there are you know, things that we have to consider as well, right? When we talk about these things, when we uh, have interest in these things. And as God's people, as Christian, we have to understand that even though we might have those similarities as those personality types, we are actually very unique. You know, each person I see, I've met so many students over the years that I was teaching in church, in school, you know, Jenny's different. Lena's different, 
Sam is different, Shua is different, Toan is different, Togon is different, Brandon is different. I might think, oh, actually Brandon is just like that boy 20 years ago in that church. <laughs> that's not true. Actually, I mean, I might do that, but that's not true because you're different, right? Brandon is very different. He's just Brandon. Right? I might think of Selena. Oh, I think five years ago I had this girl named something and no, that's not true. You know, I might categorize you in that kind of thing, but that's not true. You know, Selena is Selena. She's so unique. And not only little kids, but all of you, you know, teachers as well. God made us all very unique and different. We cannot just put us into boxes. And God created us. How did He create us? He knit us. In our mother's womb, right? All the way back then, right? He made us fearfully and wonderfully, and His works are wonderful. And not this, only this Bible verse, but God talks about how He cares and He loves each and every one of you because you're very different and unique. And when He says all of that, He also says, You should love. Not just saying, Oh, you should love, you should do this and that. But he's actually saying, I first loved you. This is how you love. And he has shown us how to love. How did he show his love? Can we live, uh, read the bold letters together? Ready, go. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I know you Christians know what this means. You heard this over and over again. But think about it. Right? When we try to love our brothers and sisters, our friends who are so different, I try to understand, but still hard to understand. Doesn't fit with my love language. But Jesus, how did he show his love? God showed his love how? He died for us while we were still sinners. It doesn't say because my personality type uh, was matching with Jesus <laughs> that he died for me. But no matter what. When we were sinners, when we are hating, when we are this bad, Christ died for us. That's how he loved us. That's how he first loved us. And he's saying, so you can love. When you love, I'm in you. When I love you, you're in me. That's what God is saying. I first loved you. And again, he says, anyone who loves me, you must also love your brother and sister. And this is what I tell you to do. And of course, I always end my sermon with God is not saying just he's giving just a bunch of rules and he doesn't care. But he's saying that I showed my love for you. So, yeah. so back to your chair. So, love your brother and sister, right? Every day and try every day. Even though you might feel like, oh, but I tried and it's not working. Why are we fighting every day? Why do we fight every day? That, that was the question that I was asked yesterday. I, I want to be that person's best friend and I love that person, but that person is not loving me, I think. I want to be good friend and I don't want to cry and fight every day. I can't even tell my mom because my mom's going to be mad at me. That's what I heard. <laughs> and... Um, that is okay. That is our life. I'm not going to say, oh, because you didn't love. That's why. I'm not going to say that, right? You are trying your best, and that's very good. But every day, we just remember, ah, this is how God first loved me. He died for me when I was a sinner. I was very bad. I'm still bad. But he loved us. He loved me first. And he says, go and do the same. And he says, I'm in you. I'm your God. I love you. That's what Jesus says, right? He first loved us. So I want you to remember, and this is not something from a God that doesn't care about us, but this is the message from God who loves us every moment right now. Okay, so let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much. We looked at many Bible uh, verses and we might not remember everything, but we just want to remember that you first loved us. While we were still sinners, you died for us. And you say, go and love your brother and sister. Because I first loved you, you should love. And help us to remember this. And that, this doesn't mean just my friend. 
not just my brother and sister in my family, but this is talking about my parents, my teachers, people around me. God, you are saying to me to love. And I want to, we want to learn and change every moment. So be with us as you first loved us. We thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.